Today in the Forge, we feel like doing a little experiment. We're gonna ask you to make blades using canister Damascus. But if you look around, you notice there's no canisters. That's because we're gonna ask you to use these. Round tubes. We're calling this challenge tubular canister. Now let's talk steel. You each have a bucket of high carbon steel in front of you. We want you to use every last ounce of it in your two inch tubular canister. Good luck, placemates. Your time starts now. My name's Ben Allenson. I'm 34 years old. I've been bladesmithing about eight years now. I have a ton of people rooting for me back home, my wife and our four beautiful boys. And I just want to say my four beautiful boys are dogs. They're not people. I've never done a tube Damascus before. Step one, make my canister, clean up all the material. Oh, uh, that's long. So I don't get sidetracked. It takes a while to cut a ball bearing. So I'm thinking it would be quicker to draw it out and then just pretty much throw the whole thing in a canister. I'm choosing not to use the white out because I'm gonna grind off that tube when I'm done anyways. Well done! I know I'll have good high carbon steel on the edge. I weld it up and throw it in the forge. Oh, he's got the kill it quench. Lo and behold, no warps at all. I just need to grind some more to get down to that good high carbon steel. My name's Kyle Therese, I'm 34 years old. I met my wife about a year and a half ago and she introduced me to bladesmithing. We actually forged our own wedding rings. I got all these materials in front of me. I'm gonna break them down as small as I can, fit them into that canister. I get the big ball bearing broken down into thirds, but it's still not fitting. So I've gotta take more pieces off of it. Normally you'd use a square can, so when you're putting it through the press to, to forge weld, you got your die set up, so you would get nice even pressure, whereas with a tube, you're not gonna get nice even pressure. I'm gonna work it slow, like I'm packing a snowball. You know, if you pack a snowball real slow, you're gonna get it nice and hard. There okay, Kyle just quenched. Nice. I take it out of the quench, and it's like I'm looking at a banana. So I try and straighten it out by applying some pressure on it. With all that mild steel jacketing that blade, he actually can bend it quite a bit. My name is Zach Tarbell. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Rochester, New York. I'm a welding instructor and a part-time bladesmith. I'm ready to go to work, and I'm looking for a challenge. My plan for the canister is to cut off six inches, which is going to be easier to manage in and out of the forge and on the power hammer. You can do a volume calculation figuring out how much tube you need. I'd leave at least a half inch of material on either side of what I wanted, so I've got sacrificial material to get rid of. A round canister is an unknown to me. I don't know how it's going to behave. I'm used to square tube. So I decide to start with something that I'm familiar with. Zach squared up his pipe. We always use squaring dies to try to apply force equally on all four faces to compress to the center. And we don't have any rounding dies. This my logo fit. So I'm trying to fit everything in the canister. It's just not fitting. I dump everything out, try to redo it. It's not going to have room. But my canister's just too small. Okay. Same as Zach is having trouble fitting some of those larger chunks of metal into his tube. Well, he's invested a bunch of time in squaring up that tube, so might as well stick with the investment. So then it hits me. Why don't I just make the canister bigger? So I'm going to make a new piece of square tube, cutting a little piece off of it, and weld everything together. This is a faster solution than starting over. Nice. Good question. It looks good, it feels good. Five, four, three, two, one. Put down your work. This round is over. All right, guys, congratulations. The three of you will be moving forward into round two of the competition. In this round, I want you guys to add handles to your blades. You'll see on your workstations, you each have six pieces of round stock. I want you to use those to make spiraled fluted handles. Good luck, placemates. Your time starts now. So my plan is to tackle the handle first. 
Ben's doing the throw it at the floor test. There you go. Is he checking the strength of him? Yeah. yeah. Some of this stuff can be really brittle. If anything blatantly shatters, I shouldn't use that if it does. Yeah. Ben's the first one on the grinder putting his flutes in. Oh, it's horrible. The flutes that I just put in are not going to work. It just doesn't feel good in my hand. It's way too big. He put the fluting in before he started shaping his handle. So isn't he just going to lose the fluting? Yeah. yeah. I need to take more material off of this handle first. He's going to have to go back and do it again. Yep. <laughs> he just took 30 minutes and chucked them out the window. I need to stop doing this because it's sucking up too much time. I want to just get the handle shaped, and then I'll take the Dremel and put flutes in smaller by hand. Kyle's looking for it. Well, he went with brass. I know I want to use brass to make a guard and a pommel to add a little bit of counterweight for such a large blade. I take it over to the bandsaw, and no issues getting through it. I decide to put my handle on first, remove a ton of material, get the basic shape of my handle done. I'm holding on to this thing, and I'm, I'm thinking about what my wife told me. Make sure you make it so it fits everybody else's hand and not just yours. And then I look over at Ben Abbott, and I'm like, this guy's got tiny little hands. I hope this thing fits in his hand. A little concerned about that clock. Two hours is pretty short to make a hidden tang with a flute. Has Zach fluted anything? No. Right now, I'm feeling confident in the time that I have and the amount that I have to get done on this knife. The last thing that I want is to go home on account of an uncomfortable handle. I want to spend the last five minutes working on my edge. I know that this is cutting it close, but I'm pretty sure that I can do it. Five minutes remaining. You can throw flutes on a blade in, in a minute if you've done it before. I'm pleased with what I have in front of me. I can't believe that I've pulled off that handle in two hours. And then I take a look at the blade to my left and my right. My heart sinks. I've forgotten to put those flutes on the handle. To test the strength and overall durability of your blades, I'll be chopping into these steel wind chimes. Now, this is not about what your blades do to those wind chimes. It's about what those wind chimes do to the edge of your blade. Ben, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. I'm a little concerned about my edge. I just hope that the chimes aren't too big of a deal and my knife doesn't snap or something like that. Ben, a lot of the weight still in this blade from when we evaluated it didn't get much lighter. As a matter of fact, adding that guard probably added more weight, and there's not a lot of counterbalance. As far as hitting the pipes go, you can see that there are some rolled over sections, packed out sections, and certainly sections where you lost your edge. But it's solid, one piece. Good job. Cool, thanks. All right, Kyle, you're up next. You ready? Oh, yeah? Good. I'm a little bit nervous about my edge. I designed it more for the sharpness test as opposed to the strength test. I hope when Dave's done hitting these wind chimes, my blade is in one piece. OK, Kyle, first off, hold up your hand. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> you got some big mitts, man. That's a big handle. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they're that big. As far as how your blade did, you've got plenty of edge still left on this blade, but you can see here where you've got a lot of rolling. But there's still a lot of edge on this knife. So good job. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. You bet. All right, Zach. You ready? Yes, sir. OK. I don't know what the judges are going to say. If not for that one parameter, I believe that my knife would do well through the strength and sharpness test. Hopefully, they're going to decide to test it. I guess. I know in the back of my head, I don't have those flutes. No fluting. You can see all the way around. You guys all agree? Zach, we asked you guys to give us a fluted handle. 
but your knife does not have that. And it was a pleasure watching you in round one. Unfortunately, your knife does not meet parameters. So for that reason, I've got to ask you to leave the forge floor. Thanks for coming out, man. Thank you. I agree with the judges. It's the right call. I missed a parameter. The other guys didn't. This time around, I realize I may not have brought my A game. If I get a second chance, I'm bringing it. <laughs>